Imagine it's 1400 years ago. It's the 9th of Muharram. At night, you hear noises and commotion coming from outside. So you leave your tent and you see people leaving the camp of Imam Hussain in their hundreds and thousands. For a split second, your eyes fall into the eyes of Imam Hussain You see the sadness and sorrow in his face. There and then, you decide you're going to stay. Knowing full well what's going to happen to you when the morning comes. So now it's the day of Ashura. You've now become the 73rd companion of Imam Hussain And imagine you walk up to the Imam and ask him how best you can serve him and he gives you the choice. What would you want to do on that day? Serving him in whatever way you would like to. So for example, you could bring back water with Abu Fadl al-Abbas salam. You could protect the tents of the women and children from being under attack. You could bring back the wounded bodies, the pieces of the companions of Imam Hussain salam. What would you want to do? Where would you want to serve your Imam? I mean, you'd want to obviously serve him in every single one of those ways th that you could, obviously. Um, hindsight's obviously a good thing to kind of know what certain things have happened, but, you know, going to get water with Hazrat Abbas, I mean, you know, the ladies is probably the one thing um, being able to protect, you know, children for example that probably don't didn't understand what was actually like you know tru truthfully happening and when you've got sisters or mothers for example i think that bites a little bit more at what you would want to do for example say so my you know as much as i'd like to do everything and try and serve you know the best way that you possibly could uh, if you were there i think for me it would obviously be trying to look after the women but ultimately you know, you'd always try and push, you know, if you were in that position to ask him what he would want you to do, for example, rather than, you know, you never know, we're only human at the end, you could always make a decision that might not be the best decision like, for you, whereas in, you know, with the Imam, he could give you direction in terms of what would be the best thing that would help you, obviously. I mean, ultimately, you're doing the main sacrifice anyway, but anything additional that you could do is all only going to help. So now imagine one day after work you come home, you open your house door, you see your family members running around the house frantically. One person's gathering fruit, another person's bringing sweets, another person's making tea. So naturally it occurs to you that you have a guest or guests that have come to, to your house. So you grab one of them and you ask, well, what's going on? Why is everyone rushing around? And someone replies to you that someone's come to see you. So you ask who and they say they're waiting for you in the living room. So you go into the living room, you open the door, you walk inside. You look around to see who's come to visit you. And you see that it's Imam Hussain alayhi In that moment, what would you say to him? What would you want him to say back to you? It's, it's difficult in terms of, I mean, you could only say how much he, without his sacrifice, 
even though they were imams after him. I don't think, well, this is just my personal opinion, that the religion would be as global or the way it is currently, for example. Um, if you look throughout the course of you know, the calendar year, um, Muharram is probably the biggest month um, we we have a lot more lectures um, we have a lot more a lot more of the kids or even anyone associated with the religion knows a lot more about Imam Hussein than they may know about the other Imams for example so the sacrifice that he's obviously given but ultimately at this time it would be to ask what you can do that is obviously going to help not just you but obviously if there's anything that you can impact in terms of the religion one person you know can't do much but any kind of anything that someone does for example but other people picking up even if it reaches one person it's going to be you know ultimately you would get so hard for that for example um, but it would be it, it would be difficult um, without being in that kind of a position to say what I mean ultimately I think I would freeze first of all to kind of even you know come to the realization that someone like that is sitting in front of me for example um, but yeah ultimately uh, you know the sacrifice that he's done and what we can do going forward especially with the way you know it's not difficult to follow the religion in the West but you're obviously impacted by a lot more things out here than you would be, for example, in certain places in the Middle East, for example. So just what we can do, um, because all of us get certain thoughts that might obviously not be completely halal, for example, or we may do things that are sins, for example, and how to obviously best refrain from those. So now imagine you've talked about some things with him and it's time for him to leave your house. What would you want him to say as a sort of a farewell before he walks out of your life, at least in, in person? What would make you the happiest to hear from his holy man? For him to tell me that I'm one of his true followers. You can't. I can't really ask for any more than that. So for him to accept your service and servitude? Yeah, I mean, obviously you can carry on doing that, but ultimately that's what would make anyone, I believe, the happiest is to obviously be told that, you know, you're a true follower of and a companion. You can't obviously call yourself a companion, but you know, someone that's part of his ummah, for example. And that's what mine would be. So at the beginning, the first question I asked you was about 1400 years ago. And as you rightly said yourself, with hindsight, it's probably easy to say, I would help in this way, or I would try to stop this from happening, or I would be the shield for the little girl from being hit, for example. And I said to you, you walk up to the Imam and you ask him and he gives you the choice. A lot of us often forget that in this day and age, we have an Imam who's with us, who we should be a companion to also. And in a way, him being absent or directly absent from us has given us the choice in the way we want to serve him. So what do you think you've done for the 12th Imam? What do you think you would like to do? How do you think we should all serve him and become closer to him because some say at least Imam Hussain had 72 who gave their everything how many does this Imam have? 
um, something that I think we all think about. Uh, truthfully, I don't think I've done as much as I would like or I should have done maybe um, within regards to our imam. It's a lot more difficult when you don't have that reminder in front of you on a regular basis, for example. It's a lot easier to forget um, and think about it after you've done certain things that maybe you think you shouldn't have because it's obviously going to hinder you going forward, for example. Um, obviously, I'd like to be the best person that I can be and try and influence as many people going forward. Um, But yeah, it's, it's difficult when, you know, 72 companions had Imam Hussein in front of them where, you know, seeing someone, you know, certain times words are not, uh, you know, actions are more, um, more powerful, powerful than, than words. Than words. Um, you know, seeing someone's expression, for example, it can hit a spot that words will not. So with the 12th Imam not being here, you know, it's a bigger test in certain ways for us that are we actually going to be one of the people that stands up when the time comes. And that's something that I think about a lot, but, you know, as for the answer, we always try and balance it on the good side of it. But I think there's a lot more that I can do, a lot more that everyone else can do. Um, you know, you look at the religion at the moment in terms of the way it's portrayed in certain places, you know, there is a lot of work to do. I think we get painted with the same brush um, in terms of the media, but, you know, all we can do in, as individually is do as much as we can to follow the religion in the right way, try and obviously spread the message as best we can. Um, and carry on commemorating each and every single one of the Imams. Obviously, Muharram's a bigger impact uh, than the other birthdays and uh, deaths. Um, yeah, try, that's all we can do is just try our best going forward. But I don't think, personally, I think I've got a lot more that I can do. <laughs> أين بقية الله على كراز خداي خدا كلاد كبيا خدا كلاد سنور غير نوا خدا کنم